Today is Tuesday. It is May 26, 2015, the day after Memorial Day. Hope you had a nice weekend. This is Wayne Goldsboro TV. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning. So glad to have you with us on a Tuesday morning. Hope everybody's well rested. Oh boy. Enjoying Memorial Day. I bet some of them aren't well rested though. I bet some of them are still trying to get over the weekend. You know? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. There Possibly. You go. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, you're bright and cheerful this morning. Yep. Yep. Had a good weekend. Oh, yeah. Ready to go. All right. Have you been to the farmer's market? I have. And you wow. know what, Wayne? Now, this year, it is being promoted even more. Last year, you know, we had every Wednesday uh -huh. that the farmer's market would be at, in the parking lot at Herman Park. Right. This year, it's Wednesday and Friday. Two days. Two days. Wow. All the way up until the day before Thanksgiving. Wow. That's how long we'll have the farmer's market. Wow, well, that's great. So, supporting your local farmers, eating local fresh mm -hmm. produce. Mm is a huge option for you all the way through summer and into fall. It is. I love it. I love fresh veggies Eight anyway. to six. Eight to six. Eight to six. Eight a.m. to six p.m. That's right. Wednesday and Friday at Herman Park in the parking lot That's there. That's right. Can't miss it. That's right. In fact, you could see it a mile away. You really can. You can see all the tents. Yeah. And there's a lot of action going on every Wednesday and Friday. All the way up until Thanksgiving. That's right. right. The day before Thanksgiving Eve. All right. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Oh, well, I can't wait to go out there. Yep. Well, guess what this Thursday is? The day after Wednesday? Yes, it is. It is also Center Street Jam. Oh, is that this Thursday? <laughs> it oh, is. It's okay. this Thursday. It wow. is Jim Quick and the Coastline. Band. Band. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> From 6 until 9 p.m., come on out and join us right there off of Center Street. It's actually in the parking lot mm -hmm. of, um, it's the John Street parking lot is what it's called. But yeah. it's behind the Irish Pub. Flying Shamrock. The Flying Shamrock. It's the Odd Fellows building. That's right. It's back it. there in that big parking yeah, lot. That's right. We have it there every other Thursday. It's a, a part of our summer uh, concert series. Come on out and enjoy them. Jim Quick and the Coastline Band. Doesn't cost you a thing to get in. There'll be food available mm. that you can purchase. Mm -hmm. There'll be beverages available. Mm. Bring out your chairs if you want to sit down and just have a nice relaxing evening. What you thinking? I think it's a great idea. I think it is I too. think it's a great idea. <laughs> We've had a great turnout so far yeah. and the rain has held off a little bit. Keeping our fingers crossed. Keeping your fingers crossed. There you go. That's right. Okay, I have something from the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. The week of June 1st through June 4th, that's a Monday through Thursday. It's something called Brushes in Motion. Oh, wow. Uh, you Sounds can, like you're learning to paint. It does sound like that. Penny yes, Craven puts this on. Penny uh, says get your creative juices flowing in this fun painting class. Students learn about color, composition, and technique while creating beautiful paintings inspired by the world around them. That sounds like fun. Yes, it does. The cost is $85 per child. Brushes in motion, it's called. And the same week, Genevieve Vance will also have a class called The Sky's the Limit. Hmm. Uh, dream of floating through uh, across a sunny summer sky while working on this creative project. Uh, students will create a beautiful hot air balloon out of paper mache. Oh, wow. wow. That's pretty neat. Oh, a yeah. A hot air balloon. Creating a hot air balloon out of paper mache. I'm not sure it's intended to fly, but still, I mean. You never know. You never know. Uh, students will also work on a, on a group art project for the outside of the Arts Council. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Well, you know, they have such interesting um, camps all summer long. Of course, all around the arts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was talking with um, Cricket Davis the other day from the Family Y. Yeah. And between the Arts Council, the Family Y, and Goldsboro Parks and Recreation, there's an abundance of camps for your children this summer. Oh, yeah. I mean, an abundance into whether they are enjoying or would like to enjoy sports mm -hmm. or the arts mm -hmm. or a little bit of everything. They're out there. And they're all at different prices. Summer so, camp. Summer camp for summer your children. Mm -hmm. All different it's, age children. Yeah, all different ages. In fact, I, 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 went, I went to camp two years ago. Oh, you did? <laughs> what kind of camp did you go to? <laughs> or do it, I not want to know? It's a secret. It's a secret. Okay, we'll keep it that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a good Memorial Day weekend? Oh, it was great. How about you? Yeah, I had a great it one. It was great. Uh, just kind of kicked back and relaxed yep. and uh, took it easy. And uh, I didn't go out of town this time. Yeah. And uh, just kind of took it easy. It Sometimes was nice. that's the best kind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had some work to do around the house, you know, yep. lawn work and yard work and lawn, lawn work and working <laughs> in the garden and the I yard and the lawn. <laughs> anyway. I hear you. Yeah. Well, let's go check out our interviews and we'll talk a little more when we come back. Okay.
All right, EMS coordinator, what does that mean? What do you do? Basically what I do is I set up the educational profile for the EMS for our students and the programs that we carry and what we offer. EMS course or classes here at Wayne Community College, how old is this class, this course? How long has it been here? Do you have any idea? For a very long time. We have two instructors who yeah. were here before I ever came to Wayne County and uh, they are retiring from EMS at the end of this year. Mm. So EMS has been in this county for a very long time. I do know that the county system has been in effect since March 2002 and before mm -hmm. that the city of Goldsboro held the EMS system. Okay. So it's, it's pretty old so now. How, how, how large is, are the classes here at the college? Typically. EMS classes. We have different types of classes. Mm -hmm. So our EMT class, our emergency medical technician, mm -hmm. is typically our biggest class, and we average around 25 students a class. Okay, how long does it take a typical student to go through an entire class? An EMT program takes one semester. Really? One semester. And after that, they're qualified to do what? Once they complete the course successfully, mm -hmm. then they'll go to their state boards. They'll take their state boards. If they pass those, they are issued their North Carolina certification, and they can go to work. As an EMT? As an EMT. All right, now I understand there are three levels of EMT, the top being paramedic, and then the other is, a, is an intermediate, and then the other is an EMT. There is. There's also one more that not a lot of people um, know about. Really? It's actually the emergency medical responder, and typically that's your firefighters, your volunteer firefighters, okay. and that's the certification they like to hold. Mm -hmm. And the layperson, the public, can carry that certification as well. Okay. The public can. Well, anybody can. Yeah, the public how much training's can, involved with that, though? The EMR class is only about eight weeks. Okay. It's not a very long class. Is that offered here? It is. How about that? And you're right. A lot of people don't know that. They do not. Including me. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, as as a uh, let's say uh, as a student comes to uh, to Wayne Community College to study uh, to become an EMT mm -hmm. paramedic, uh, and uh, roughly 25 students per class over a semester. Yes. What in your in your uh, how long have you been doing this by the way? I've been at the college as the EMS coordinator for four years now. Okay I want to ask you in a few minutes what your history is okay. here okay but we'll get back to that in just a moment but I wanted to ask you having uh, done this for a few years uh, in your mind what is inspiring students to want to become an EMT or what what's What's in their mind? What are they thinking? One of the most prominent answers that I get from students that I interview about joining these programs are, it comes from a personal experience. Um, they've had a family member, a loved one, or even themselves mm -hmm. who've had a serious emergency medical situation and they've had to call 911 and just watching the EMTs and the paramedics perform their job and save them or their family just completely in autumn. They were just so inspired, they decided that that's something I want to look into. That's, I think that's what I want to do. And so wow. they start investigating, and they come talk to me, and then they usually get into a class. Do you talk to uh, the individual students before they come to class? I do. I require an interview appointment with mm -hmm. every possible student. Um, every potential student will come see me. We'll make an appointment, sit down, we'll talk for about good 20, 30 minutes. And we're going over a lot of information, what's expected of them in the class, what they can expect from the class. Um, there's a packet of information that has to be completed, and we just talk. I want to know why they want to take the class. Are they in it for the right reasons? Are they going to be a good student for this program? And what are they telling you? They tell me a lot. Most of them that come to see me have made up their mind. It's very <laughs> seldom that I get someone who has no clue what they want to do and they're just doing it for the heck of it. Mm -hmm. Most of them have made up their mind that this is what they want to do. Or they'll use it as a stepping stone to go into medical, like in PA school, um, a doctor, mm -hmm. nursing program. So they'll use it to get medical experience to help them with their classes that mm -hmm. they want to continue and on. And that's with. a good thing, too. It's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It helps them out tremendously. They've got a better understanding on both sides of the fence. Um, as EMS workers, we attend patients out in the field where it's happening. Right. And by the time they get to the hospital, they have to relay that. So if you have a student who has been on this side, and they see the after at the hospital, they, they understand mm -hmm. more. They, they, they have a better concept of what's going on. I have talked to many 
uh, not students, I've talked to many EMT personnel. And uh, I'm sure that I may have missed one somewhere that doesn't like what they do, but they're all committed to this. They, they all love their, their jobs. They all are passionate about what they do. EMS is one of those jobs you love it or you hate it. And if you hate it and you got into it for the wrong business or the wrong reasons, mm -hmm typically you're not going to stay with it because it takes commitment. It takes commitment, it takes compassion, and it takes devotion to do this job. So typically the members and the employees that you see doing this job mm -hmm. want to be there. That's what they've chose to do. All right. How did you end up here? Tell me, <laughs> tell me about Kim Boswell, Kim. I have been, my parents were in the fire department. Okay. Um, I've always been in the local fire departments and of course they had EMT programs. Mm -hmm. I was always interested in the medical field. My mother worked in the hospital so I've always wanted to be in that field and I always thought I wanted to be a doctor and then I realized there was a lot of school involved so I decided well maybe <laughs> I'll be a nurse and I actually attempted that. I started doing prerequisites until I found out about the paramedic program and um, type A personalities like to just go and do. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that that would be a better suit for me. So I went and enrolled into the paramedic program at Southeastern Community College from and where I'm at in Columbus County. In Columbus County. In Columbus County. So you're from Whiteville. Uh, well, close to it, Lake oh. Waccamaw. Lake Waccamaw. Yes. Well, sure, everybody knows where Lake Waccamaw is. Actually, after I got my paramedic, Whiteville Rescue was the first medic level um, agency that I ran with. At the time, it was the only medic in Columbus County okay. was Whiteville. So how did you end up in Wayne County? <laughs> While I was in Whiteville Rescue, <laughs> um, the Wayne County uh, EMS assistant manager mm -hmm. came to Columbus County to put on and to do a class called Tactical Medic. Okay. And I thought it was interesting and I wanted to take it. So I did. So I was introduced to him through that class. And he asked a lot of us medics if we wanted, you know, new jobs if we wanted to come up they needed some medics in wayne county and i was like oh yeah and he said no come on so he gives us an application tells right. us to turn it in obviously you had been here many times i would never been here a day in my life <laughs> i didn't even know where goldsboro was <laughs> and so i i really put the application away mm -hmm. and about a year later a he year. was a year later he was doing another class and he calls me up wanting to know one was i going to attend the class and two why had i not put my application in <laughs> <laughs> I said, just too much going on. He said, what do you got going on now? I mm. said, not much. He said, well, meet me in Goldsboro. So he gave me directions, and I actually came to Goldsboro. I met with him. I met with the training officer, and I met with the manager that day. Right. And before I left, I had a job with Wayne Is County right? MS <laughs> as a medic. And that was in uh, 2000, beginning of 2004. Okay. So I had to go home and terminate my other job. and. So you I, feel good about your decision? I do. I love being a medic. It was awesome. Um, it was, every job has good and bad points. Mm -hmm. But this is the type of job where the least little good point overrides the worst situation you've ever been in. It's like it's erased. Um, I tell a lot of students, you're going to go through some bad days. You're going to have some bad calls. Um, but there's always going to be that one call that comes up at the perfect time mm -hmm that makes a huge difference in somebody's life. And then you realize why you've done this to start with. Well, you know, you mentioned that there may be some who do this because they don't know what else to do. They may be coming to class because they may want to try this to see if they like it. Mm -hmm. What sort of rate, if you keep track of this, uh, how, many, how many students just don't cut, don't make the cut? How many of them just walk out? Very few. Very few. Very few. I have some that change their mind, and what I mean is I'll have uh, firefighters have to be EMTs. Yeah. And so they have to start here, and they'll come in saying, I want to be a firefighter. Okay, well, let's get you through this EMT class so you can apply for the fire departments. Right. And I've, uh, I have seen a lot of them says, wow, I really like this. So <laughs> they go to the next class, yeah. and they decide they want their paramedic, and that's, that's great. Right. But there's very few that don't make it and typically that is the students who um, get in over their head it's just more than what they thought it would be mm -hmm. but there's very few of those all right very few i take it you now enjoy what in you a do simulated Love ambulance it. is that okay. what this is it is it's uh, exactly what it is all right and uh, this is of course part of the training and this looks very real uh is this as close as it 
could possibly be? Absolutely. The, the, if you wanted any more real, we'll have to go out to the parking lot to the one sitting out there. Oh, okay. And perhaps even find a patient somewhere. I hope not. I hope not, too. But anyway, uh, tell me about this, uh, this uh, ambulance here. Well, this was a simulated ambulance that we um, were so lucky to get several years ago. It was actually before I came here. I was actually teaching part time mm -hmm. um, at the college when when this was brought in. Mm -hmm. But it's used to actually simulate actually running calls. We can actually load the patient and unload the patient. We have the compartment set up that is just like would be on a typical ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, suction, air, radio controls anything we've got storage anything to really i mean it's just like a real ambulance the suction and the air are these operable do they, they actually are. work they are operable if you hook them up oh okay okay uh, so like are, to are, this one yeah you here. have to put mm -hmm. a pump to the to the back side of it mm -hmm. and if you hook this stuff up you can actually run it in this ambulance okay is does it do you do that during the the uh, training do not, you hook it up? Not typically. Not typically. But you go through all the other steps. Absolutely. The only thing that's not there is the actual suction and air and Absolutely. noise. Absolutely. And we do have portables that we can pull into. Okay. Okay. All right. Tell me about this guy here. This is one of our Sims mannequin. He's one of our older units. We do have some new ones in, but I save them to do mm -hmm. demonstrations and take to schools. Now, she's not saying you're old. <laughs> she didn't say that. No. But, Although you are a little gray. All right. But our Sims mannequins, we can pretty much do anything with this mannequin we could do with the patient um, we can defibrillate him we can start IVs we can intubate him we can splint him we can give injections we can take blood pressures we can take pulses he's computer operated he is ah I see the... he has all kinds of wires mm-hmm I see all right all right okay and so you can do anything with this mannequin that uh, would involve a situation in the field. Absolutely. We'll give the students a scenario mm -hmm. and they have to treat this mannequin as a real patient. So they're actually doing the procedures. They're actually drawing up the meds, giving the meds, intubating the patient, defibrillating, setting the jewels, anything that needs to be done out in the field, right. they learn give to do in here. Give us a demonstration here. if you would, Kim. So we know that okay. they're good here. Um, when we're teaching the field. placement and compression rates on an individual, we mm -hmm. use this mannequin. Okay. So it will actually measure the depth, so we know that we're teaching them the de uh, deep enough and the compression rate, so that we know that they're doing it fast enough. And their hand placement. So typically we're going to tell them in CPR class that this hard part of the palm mm -hmm goes actually it's the lower sternum but it looks like the middle of the chest uh -huh. so your sternum is going to run from here to your xiphoid process right. and you don't want to go to this xiphoid process because if you feel you got a little knot there if you push it it hurts so you're right above that that will be the palm of your hand the bone right on the lower portion of the sternum you're going to lock your hands and typically you're going to have to get really close to the patient and up over them because you've got to press down at least two inches wow two, two inches. inches so it's hard to do standing up but when you're doing it you're going to get up over this patient and you're going to compress two inches that seems like a lot it does seem like a lot but, but you're, you're saving a life here you're right? saving a life you're now the you're the heart of this patient you're having to do what that heart does and that's a big job do you ever, is there a chance you'll injure someone doing that? We have patients like our elderly patients who have like osteoporosis, right. they have bone disease and things of that nature and without correct hand placement mm -hmm. there could be a possibility with these patients of probably maybe cracking or breaking a rib but that's the importance of correct hand placement because we don't want that to happen. So we want people to know what they're doing. Exactly. Don't just guess at it. Exactly. Get training. We want them to know exactly what they're doing so they can provide good, accurate CPR for our patients. And that's why we encourage uh, hands-on training. Absolutely. It's a huge portion of this program is hands-on. We want them to learn in this controlled environment so that when they're in the field, it comes second nature. All right. Kim, now what do we have here? These are some of our older mannequins that we like to use to teach patients how to innovate or actually to teach our EMT students the correct placement for nasopharyngeal airways and oral pharyngeal airways. 
yeah, big words, and we cut them down into letters like MPAs and OPAs. Okay. And this is a good practice mannequin for them because it teaches them and they have the capacity to actually learn to do it correctly before they get out in the field. And we also use these mannequins to train our intermediate students how to intubate, which is putting the ET tube down to breathe for a patient who's not able to breathe for themselves. So we will use these to also teach them how to innovate. Then we move them to the more lifelike mannequins to make it more realistic. All right, very good. And you have the the bags our, here? Our IV setups in yeah. our medic class and in the intermediate class as well, right. there are a lot of medical um, medications and a lot of it can be the IV bags. Um, different types of medication, they've got dopamine, epi, drips, they can do uh, normal saline. Mm -hmm. There's different types of medication that you would use for a different si situation. Mm -hmm. So whatever the call may be is what kind of medication they're gonna have to pull out the bag. Again, we wanna stress that these courses available at Wayne Community College. Yes, they are. Uh, under the, uh, uh, okay, EMS is under what umbrella? Public safety. Public safety. Mm -hmm. So if you have a student, if you have a high school or, or a student, or if you yourself are interested in getting training to be an EMS, to be part of this uh, life-saving team, then uh, Kim Boswell is the person that you will be talking with a little later on, right? Absolutely. Now, what, what does someone do? Do they apply to the college or do they talk to you first? They come talk to me. Okay. Um, the, the big criteria is we need to make sure that they're of age, which means I need them to be at least 17 years of age by the end of class, which means that if their birthday falls on the right day, they can actually start the EMT class at 16 years and nine months as long as they are 17 on the last day of class, then they are allowed to state test. 16 years and nine months. As long as they are 17 on the last day of class. Last day of class, which is of course a semester or three months. Yes. Now, once they talk to you, so how do they contact you by the way? Typically my information is out there. I do a lot of presentations at school. Mm -hmm. We have a program here called Discover Wayne mm -hmm. and I get to meet a lot of students. Um, we publicize it on our website under the Public Safety Division. Mm -hmm. We have flyers that go out. We actually, I even get Miss Tara Humphreys to actually put it on the radio and, and so we can get a broader base and get some more students to come in and let them know that what we offer here. Mm -hmm. So um, so if they call the switchboard here at the college at 735-5151 and they say, I want to talk or leave a message for Kim Boswell, then you'll get that message. Absolutely. They can contact the college that you just said, or they can use my direct line at 919-739-6893. 739-6893. Absolutely. That's my direct line. So Excellent. it goes straight to my office. Well, Kim, I have more questions, but gee, we just don't have the time. And I, I thank you for uh, letting us come in and take a look at your classroom here. And uh, uh, where are we now? Why are there no students here? Oh, this is during the day, and we. This is the end of the semester. Mm. Students are taking final exams. They're oh, getting yeah. finished up. Okay. My EMT classes finished their final exams last week, except I have an MR class that is doing their final exam tonight. So through the day, mm -hmm. we may not have any EMT classes going on, but sometimes we offer continuing education classes for our EMTs. So how many students uh, were in this, uh, took their final exam here? Oh my goodness. Approximately? Last week, 24, mm -hmm. 25 took their exam so, okay. last week. And how many of them made it? All of them passed. All of them passed. They are all going to their state testing the 30th of this month. Oh boy, so training here, and then you go get state certified. State certified. And we try to get that done within like 30 days of you finishing class because we have seen the results that the sooner that they state test, the better the results. So that we have 25 brand new EMTs providing they all get certified. They're going to be. And there's no reason for them to, for us to think that they're not going to be because they're, they're all be. very smart because they're Wayne County students. Absolutely. And they all took the EMT class here with coordinator Kim Boswell. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great information. And we're back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for being with us. Absolutely. All right. Let's take a look at birthdays very quickly. Yes, let's I only do. have a few here. Pam okay. Greer, the actress. You know Pam Greer. She is 66 years today. She sure doesn't look it. Birthday today for Philip Michael Thomas. Philip Michael Thomas. Wasn't he on uh, Miami Vice? Is that Maybe. Philip Michael? I I'm think so. Sure. Anyway, he's 66 also. They were born the same day. But they're no relation. <laughs> uh, Margaret Collin, 
is having a birthday. She's 57 today. The actor Doug Hutchinson celebrating as well. He's 55. Jeannie Francis, 53. Bobcat Goldthwaite is a very funny guy. Who? Bobcat. He's Bobcat. Just Bobcat Goldthwaite. He's, uh, he's a comedian. He's done, uh, he's done some movies. He, was, he started stand-up, uh -huh. and he, uh, he came across to start with as a very offensive kind of person, you know, yelling, doing a lot of yelling mm -hmm. and complaining about things. But he turned out to be a very funny guy. He's done some movies as well. But anyway, he's 53 today, and Lauren Hill turns 40 today. The singer-actress is. There Happy you go. birthday. Happy everything. Sure day. There you go. That's right. All right. Well, this Friday night yes. at the Cliffs of the New State Park, yes, yes. they're having something called a night hike adventure. No. Yes, they are. Let's yes. see what it's all about. All right, a night hike. From 8.30 until 9.30, they said, if you're fascinated by things that go bump in the night, have you ever wondered why some animals come out in the dark while others do not? I had a cousin like that. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. We'll come out for a fun hike where we will test our nighttime senses. Bring a flashlight, wear bug spray, meet at the visitor center. That's from 8.30 to 9.30 this Friday night at the Cliffs of the New State Park. Mm. Well, that's pretty uh, neat. That is neat. Yep. I always had to wear bug spray around my cousin, too. Yeah. Did so you? I'm well familiar with this uh, <laughs> procedure, yes. There you go. This is a Cliffs uh, of the New uh, State Cliffs Park. Cliffs of the News. Highway 111 South between here and wherever that is down there. But uh, if you haven't been out to that place, boy, I'll tell you, you need to go to the it, Cliffs of the News. It news. is. It's very nice. It it's is very, very nice. really, really nice. And also this Thursday, the Goldsboro Family Y is holding their Healthy Kids Day at the YMCA Preschool and Child Care Center. It'll be from 5.30 until 7.30. It's free, open to the public. To find out more about it, you can go on their website, goldsboroymca.org. Healthy go. Kids Day, 5.30 to 7.30. That sounds like fun. My friend Willie Walker, I saw him at the Relay for Life uh, uh -huh. a couple of weeks ago. Willie Walker is an ordained minister. He holds ongoing devotional study at the Senior Center on East Ash Street. Wednesday morning from 10 till 11.30. He is an elder at the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base Chapel and the Ray of Hope Christian Church. Uh, it's a, this particular group at the Senior Center is non-denominational. All seniors are welcome. If you'd like information, you can call Willie Walker. His number is 919-440-0098. For years, he was with the Employment Security Commission. Okay. And just a great guy. I, I've known him a long time. Fantastic. There you go. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Let's see. Okay. Today's the 26th. Well, at the Senior Center, speaking of it. Yep. Today is a typical Tuesday. <laughs> and if you don't know what a typical Tuesday is at the Senior Center, we start with the arthritis exercise at 930. We go into billiards at 10. We go into an open mic show and tell program at 1015. The uh, crochet and knitting starts at 1 p.m. Cards, at also recreational cards now at 1 o'clock. Pinochle at 1 o'clock. And then uh, Stacia Fields boogies. <laughs> yes, she with, does. <laughs> with her line dancing. Uh, and, of course, uh, oh, that, I'm sorry, that's been canceled. That was canceled line dancing. for Tuesday, this coming okay. Tuesday. Yeah, I think she's off during the summer. Yeah, anyway. I saw Sounds her like the, you have uh, a full schedule, though. I am telling you, you should see every, and they, print, they have to print us a small because there's so yes. much going on out there. But I saw Stacia out at the, last week out at the... Uh, Relay for the, Life? No, well, no, it was at the, uh, at the air show. Wings over Wayne. Woo! Man. Speaking of wonderful. Yes. Wow. I'm, I'm still trying to get over it. Yeah, it was it, fantastic. Just, I know, it is amazing. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, one more thing very quickly yes. before we move on to whatever it is we're supposed to do next. You can always count on the American <laughs> Red Cross for two things on the day of a particular blood drive any any blood drive you can count on them for bandages yes. and you can count on them for Krispy Kreme donuts <laughs> whoa whoa June 11th uh, the June 11th they're gonna have an event at the Wayne County Red Cross office which is at 600 North George Street they'll they'll also be providing an added incentive the uh, Red Cross uh, will, that, uh, the department Okay, this is, a, this is a Wayne County employee's blood drive. Oh, okay. okay. When it says the department, I knew I needed to stop yep, right there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, but anyway, if you work for Wayne County government, you need to be giving blood <laughs> on, on June 11th, okay? That's right. June 11th, give blood at the Red Cross office, and you'll get some donuts. <laughs> How so, about that? <laughs> so I guess who's, I'm going to be... Uh, yeah, you go head that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You go head that oh, way. Oh, yeah. You love you some Krispy Kreme. I love me some Krispy Kreme, let me tell you. <laughs> I yes. hear you. All right. Let's see, uh, on May 31st, Cliffs of the Noose is holding something else called Campfire in the Woods. Oh. So they're having all kinds of interesting things they through do. the summer. It's from 7 to 8 p.m. It says spend a relaxing evening around the campfire mm -hmm. while listening to tales about our local wildlife. Ooh. This topic will be, what's it take to be a tree? 
there bark. will also be bark. 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 There will also be an opportunity to share in some additional fireside snacks, marshmallows, and other things. Meet at the amphitheater. That is May 31st from 7 to 8. Campfire in the woods. All right, sounds like a lot of fun. Now yep. we're going to do this again tomorrow. We'll we be are. back on Wednesday right here on Wayne Goldsboro Television. I do hope you indeed have a wonderful day. And while we're moving back on that camera thing there, and while we're moving back on the camera <laughs> thing, is it moving back? <laughs> there we All right. go. All right. Moving back on the camera thing there, I hope you have a great day. Until tomorrow for Wayne Goldsboro Television, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Ken Best, and this is what's happening in your community. <laughs>